Welcome back to another episode of Fast Gadgets. Today we're going to be finally putting in the SSD into the MacBook Pro 2008 and I'm pretty excited. I'm hoping that performance wise we're going to see a massive difference. Um, it is not a SATA 3 controller so I don't think it's going to be the end all be all but it'll definitely make an improvement. Got my helper here, Pixie. She's going to help me out making this computer much faster. Uh, first thing I want to show you is uh, we're going to run a benchmark with uh, NovaBench. Pretty good um, freeware program that does a good job of giving a computer a benchmark rating for overall performance, which I really like. So let's get an idea of how it compares. Uh, I'm going to make sure all the apps are closed first. And run the tests. And we'll be back. Ah yes, close all the applications. So overall, um, it tests the CPU, tests the graphics subsystem, tests the hard drive, tests memory speed, and I got a bench score of 400, and you can see the hard drive, 36 megabytes a second, not the greatest. Um, I didn't really notice it, to be fair. Um, now I'm going to test out with Blackmagic. And Blackmagic is showing just a little bit better as far as uh, testing speed. We're looking at 44, 45 megabytes a second, but not exactly stellar. Um, using the computer for the basics, it's, it's not too bad. Um, just running the browser, um, office applications, it does pretty well. Uh, it helped that I put the 6 gigabyte RAM upgrade. So this is the SSD that I want to put in. Uh, again, it's not exactly the best SSD money can buy, but overall it'll work. And I have my connector. I have a USB to SATA cable that I'm putting in. And I'm going to copy the current hard drive to this hard drive. Lucky for me that the laptop has a fresh install of um, El Capitan. Actually, when I got the hard drive or the uh, MacBook Pro, it had a fresh install of 10.6.3. So uh, there's really nothing on here. So the copy will basically be an operating system, and it's only 19 gigabytes. So this is not going to take too long. So I grabbed a copy of Carbon Copy Cloner, uh, which is not free. However, um, you do get a 14-day free trial. Uh, as many times as I've used it, I do think I'm going to buy a license because uh, when somebody offers software for free, I think it's really awesome that you get to try it out, and it's 100% working, so it's not crippleware. Um, I really feel like the author has put forth an awesome effort to uh, let you try the software and definitely worth purchasing. I know I'm going to be using it again in the future. So if you use this software and you find it useful, make sure you give the author some kudos and, and buy a license. 14 bucks, right? Who can complain? Uh, so I'm going to copy to my SSD and it's not showing up yet because I haven't initialized it and formatted it. So I'm going to need to do that. And I'll go into Utilities. And I'm going to use the Disk Utility. And I want to make sure, of course, I'm on the right drive. Of course, I'm, I don't think Mac would, be, would allow you to try to format 
the current drive you're working on. Hopefully that would not be the case. And I'm going to do a race. I want to title the drive something different. I got one called Mac HD, so I'm going to do Mac SSD. And you'll notice I don't use any spaces in the name. Uh, just have it from volume names in Windows land. I actually uh, have just started learning and using Macs, uh, maybe for the past one or two months. So uh, everything I've been doing, uh, I've learned recently. Uh, so if I don't do it the correct way, well, you know, everybody has to start somewhere. Uh, I edit all my videos on iMovie because it's just very efficient, very simple. Um, I really like the utilities and how things are designed in OSX. Um, so far, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, definitely, I am not a Mac fanboy, but uh, I have to say that the operating system is really good. So, here's Carbon Copy Cloner. Again, I'm clicking Trial. And now I can select the source drive. And now my Mac SSD is enabled, enabled because I formatted it. And I'm going to start the clone process here. And I am not going to make you wait for the whole process. I'm going to speed this up quite a bit. I have to say, this tool is awesome. Um, apologies for the uh, shaky camera there. But uh, I had a MacBook Pro 2011, and it had about 80 gigabytes on it. And it took a couple hours to clone it. This one has 19 gigabytes, and it's actually going really quickly. Um, I was thinking, because it's an older MacBook, that I would be waiting a while. But um, it... It actually is going quite fast, so I doubt I will have to concern myself. I notice here I did do the recovery partition, the recovery volume on the drive. It recommends in Carbon Copy Cloner that you do that if you are going to use the drive as your main drive so you have a recovery partition just in case uh, your main operating system has a problem. And now it's doing the copy. When we come back, I will start dismantling the Mac and we'll go from there. So I did speed up this video quite a bit. Uh, I didn't want to make everybody sit around. Um, there are case screws all along the bottom um, that you need to take off and some of these are longer than others so I separated all my case screws uh, so that I didn't have to figure out which ones went where. I had a, actually I used the hard drives um, plastic holder and I just put them in the rectangular plastic holder so that I could figure out which ones go where, um, which made my life a lot easier. There's case screws along the outside that you have to remove and I went around and removed all those. Uh, luckily, my wife was helping me out, so I was, <laughs> I had somebody to hold the camera because um, I ordered a tripod, but it hasn't come yet, so this, this made life a lot easier. Um, special thanks to my wife and my helper doggies. So once all these case screws on the outside are out, um, there are yet more screws. Um, you have to take the... Uh, RAM out, or you have to take the cover of the RAM, and then there's some screws uh, around the RAM area as well. So right here inside the where the battery is held, there's a few screws there. This is definitely a lot different than it was with the MacBook Pro uh, 2011 unibody. So I take those ones out, and then I've got a couple more. See the you can see the Torx screw right there, right next to the memory that needs to be taken out, and popping the memory out, 
and then finally flipping it over and we lift the lid and it still wouldn't come apart. I had a few more screws that I needed to take out. Two Torx screws. Very long, very special, so I put those separate. And now I flip back and gently pry the cover up. And oh boy. This is completely different than all the videos that I watched before. Completely different. The, the hardware configuration, nothing like all the videos I watched, um, which kind of surprised me. I, I can't imagine that the MacBook Pro 2008, early 2008, changed that much, but um, that those connectors there, uh, all that stuff makes me so nervous. I'm always so afraid I'm going to break one of those connectors. This thing was glued onto the hard drive, and I do mean glued. Um, they really didn't expect anybody would be getting in here. Once I got those off, hard drive popped right out. Both are SATA connectors. I was a little worried that it wasn't, but no worries. Uh, Thickness-wise, I was a little concerned, but it really wasn't a big issue. Um, I didn't have to worry about thickness at all. Um, I was worried that the SATA drive would be too thin and it would not fit in correctly and the SATA connector would not go back in correctly. Um, there were four screws around the outside of the drive that are a little bit special. Took those out, put them into my SATA drive, and had to be very careful of the wires and pressed back down um, that data ribbon and put the connectors back on. Super duper important to be careful with those wires and needed to put a little bit of tape. There was tape covering the wires originally so that they don't move around. Totally delicate operation. I always get so nervous when I'm inside a computer because um, I know what it's worth and I really don't want to lose what I've got. So plugging the clips back in and flipping the unit back over, putting the memory in. I actually waited. I did not. I'm, I cut out this section where um, I was going to wait and not put any screws in to see if the thing booted up, but I decided to put the screws in. Uh, I guess I assumed everything was going to work out just fine. You know how computers are, though. So there are a vast number of screws to put back in. And I'm glad I had the order correct. Uh, it made my life a lot simpler because I knew which ones went where, so I didn't have to figure out was this the right size screw or not. By the way, a magnetic screwdriver is your best friend when doing this. Uh, the one I have there is magnetized, but it barely has any magnetism, so it didn't work very well. Um, it does pay to invest in a decent toolkit if you haven't. Uh, you can get ones for pretty cheap that aren't too awful expensive. Uh, and you won't lose screws, which is wonderful. And a couple screws on the outside, back by the hinge. There's my dent. Uh, despite the dent, computer works awesome. And for the price I paid, I can't complain. I really can't. And last couple of screws here. Getting very close to being completed. I'm pretty geeked to do the benchmark. Find out what I get for this. Um, The SSD was only $112, so 
I thought that was a pretty good deal for a 250 gigabyte SSD. Uh, less than 50 cents a gigabyte. So, not so bad. And still more screws. I put them back in in the reverse order that I took them out. Something to think about. And here we go with the battery. Now it's time for a power up. All right. You ready, Meadow? Okay, here we go, buddy. Three, two, one, go. Super dog. Oh, yeah. It's a miracle. We did it. Woohoo. <laughs> Woo -woo -woo. <laughs> Always appreciate having my helpers. Well, it boots up much faster. I've noticed that. I'm very pleased. Uh, the first boot up is always slow uh, once you get the SSD in. I don't know why. Maybe Mac has to initialize new hardware behind the scenes. I'm sure that's the case. As many of you know, um, the core of the Mac operating system is actually FreeBSD, uh, which is kind of like Linux. So let's run Blackmagic. Let's see what we're dealing with. So before we were getting about 42 megabytes a second, and now we're getting a write of 120, and a read of about 130. So write performance is approximately three times better than it was before. I'm extremely excited about that. Not a uh, set of three speeds, but way improved. Check out the disk utility. Yes, we're on the Mac SSD. It cloned over everything. And booted up successfully, obviously. Joyous occasion. Let's check out Nova Bench. Uh, so, Nova Bench ran, and Despite the fact that the drive write speed is greatly improved, it still gave it the same Nova Bench score of 391. I'm a little confused by that. Um, I would have expected it to have been much better. Look at the drive write speed 36 versus 115, according to Nova Bench. It just doesn't make sense. But anyway, I always save all of my um, benchmarks and actually upload them to Google Drive so I have a track record of benchmarks for all systems before and after hardware upgrades. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share, and I hope you will subscribe, and I'll see you again for the next video. Thank you.